Hi, this is the third video of Chapter 4 Input Markets. In this video, we are going to talk about the labor supply and the equilibrium. Okay, so just to begin with the supply, we know that the determinants of the supply can be what we have here or any other, but these are the most important. So the first one is order salaries. Imagine that we have an increase in the wages in other occupations from other markets for which workers in a given labor market are qualified okay so this is going to reduce the labor supply in this market they can move from our market to another market and if in another market the wage increases they will prefer to work in this other market so the supply in our market in our sector is going to decrease the number of workers that want to work for our sector is going to decrease if the wage increases in a different sector the second one is non-wage income an increase in non-wage income is going to reduce the labor supply okay if we increase for example the rent that comes from a rented uh, apartment, then there will be a lower labor supply. Some people will decide uh, not to work if they have a higher non-wage income. In the third place, we can talk about the preferences for work over leisure. If there is a net increase in individual preferences for work in relation to leisure, it raises it increases the supply of labor okay so if at some point they prefer to work instead of have leisure the supply of labor will increase okay it can happen for many different reasons maybe because the weight has increased in the sector or for any other reason they just prefer to work instead of continue with their leisure the fourth one is non-wage aspects of employment. Imagine that there is an improvement on the non-wage aspects of employment. So this is going to increase the labor supply. Imagine, for example, that the companies in the sector are beginning to offer uh, some benefits, some benefits such as uh, having a private health insurance so more people would like to work for this sector there will be an increase in the labor supply the fifth one is the number of qualified workers if there is an increase in the number of qualified workers in a given type of job uh, market it will increase the job offer the, the labor uh, supply okay so imagine that for example we have a change uh, there are more people who decide to study stem uh, degrees stem is science technology engineers and mathematics and there are more people who decide to study this type of degrees so then there will be an increase in the job supply in the labor supply in the number of workers that want to uh, work in this sector okay so then if we want to talk about the equilibrium now that we have studied the supply and the demand we know that if we have a competitive market of factors to find the equilibrium we will find it when the price of the factor when the wage equals to the quantity demanded and supplied okay so since the workers have perfect information in a perfectly competitive market all of them receive exactly the same salary and they produce the same marginal revenue product of labor so in the equilibrium the marginal revenue product of labor of one more unit of labor will be equal to the marginal cost and the marginal cost of hiring one more worker is exactly the weight that i have to pay to this new worker that i hire so the marginal revenue product of labor will equal to the wage when we have an equilibrium okay that's because the marginal cost of hiring one more worker equals to the wage 
So when both the market of product and the market of factors are perfectly competitive, the factors will be employed efficiently. And this means that the marginal revenue product of labor equals to the price multiplied by the marginal productivity. So when the market of products is not competitive, we have, for example, a monopoly, the above condition, this condition is not satisfied, but we have that the marginal revenue product of labor is below this line, the, the multiplication of the price with the marginal productivity. Okay, so this will be below, as I have said in the last video. So let's see here if we have a competitive labor market in which the output market is competitive. The equilibrium wage is given by the intersection of the demand of labor and the supply of labor. So in the point A in this graph, you will have the wage which is given by the market and the number of workers that will work in this market, okay? Because this is the demand, the marginal revenue product of labor, and this is the supply, the number of workers that want to work depending on the salary. Okay, so a firm that is operating in a market of imperfect competition, in this case, if we have a monopoly, for output has market power, and therefore the marginal revenue is below the price as I have said in the last video, then the marginal revenue product of labor will equal to the marginal revenue multiplied by the marginal productivity. And this is below, this is lower than the price multiplied by the marginal product of labor, the marginal productivity. Okay, so what we have then is that when the producer has monopoly power, the marginal value of a worker, which is given by this, this in the output uh, in the output market we will compute the price here but in this case we just compute the value of a worker the value of a worker is greater than the wage okay the wage is given by the point where the supply uh, coincides with the demand and then the value of the worker comes from this other um, this other equation, which is the price multiplied by the price, the marginal productivity. Okay, so here we have the value of this additional worker, and here we have the wage that this additional worker is going to uh, have as a salary. Okay, so point B is going to determine the quantity of labor that the firm hires and the wage rate that they are going to pay. And here we have the number of workers. Okay, so. Just uh, have a look at this and compare it with the com perfect competition. This is the monopolistic output market, and then you can compare this with perfect competition to see which are the differences. Okay. And that's all for this video. See you in the next one.